What does the doctor need to see to be willing to try it? What does the hospital need to see to be willing to pay for it? You start with a lot of these considerations at hand and you start building the product knowing that you're going to really have to prove it before someone tries it, which is a little bit different than what happens in the rest of tech. How do you bring a technology or a product like yours to the market? Like what what are the obstacles to bring these things to light then? And what does he do from a process standpoint? Will he accelerate all of this into less days or one single place where people can find the information? And how do you bring it to market? Like how do you convince so many stakeholders? The way we bring it to market is really much more similar to other healthcare products than it is to other technology products. So at the end of the day, what Paige is really building is digital versions of diagnostics and biomarkers that right now might might have a chemical basis and also new ones that don't exist today. And so because we're building diagnostic and biomarker technology, we need to follow the path to market that a lot of these others have already, which involves a mix of different things. It involves generating that evidence so that physicians feel comfortable using the technology and they even feel comfortable trying it for the first time. Then there's also, there's regulatory bodies in, in a lot of different geographies And we need to know for the geographies where we want to participate, what are the regulatory requirements to get this, say, FDA cleared or CE marked? And on top of that, every country has data privacy and security requirements that might differ between the countries. So this really is about like, how do you build an end-to-end product and bring it to the market? So it's not just about we want to build this better diagnostic for this type of cancer. It's also, okay, who are all the stakeholders around it? What does the IT group need to see? What does the doctor need to see to be be willing to try it? Um, What does the hospital need to see to be willing to pay for it? And, And you start with a lot of these considerations at hand and you start building the product knowing that you're going to really have to prove it before someone tries it, which is a little bit different than what happens in the rest of tech. You know, in technology, we usually, when we like something new, we say always these things to go to the early adopters, the, the enthusiastic and so on. How would you define the stakeholders in this space? Is there a similar dynamic? Are they enthusiastic or are they more pragmatist? Like they only act based on a significant benefit or an expectation of a logical benefit. I think it's a little bit of both. So I think there's a lot of people that are eager to try it and see it. But there's the question is which of them are truly willing to do it and which of them are going to be the the early adopters. In healthcare, they're called key opinion leaders. If you can get some of these institutions and some of these physicians to test out and validate that your product is valuable and it does what you claim it does, then a lot more of them are going to come on board. So definitely the, the requirements for this evidence generation is an imperative in healthcare. It's not a nice to have. So definitely the strategy here is to generate solid evidence and then more people will come. And, and finding those early adopters is very important. Sometimes they come our way. They say, we want to work with you. You're doing interesting things. We think this can bring a lot of value to the world of pathology. Sometimes we find them. It's just like any other field, I would say. There's definitely those who can't wait to try this and they're excited about it. And there's others that want to see a much more mature offering with, you know, regulatory clearance, multiple sites that are already installed. They want to talk to people that are using your system in clinical practice, and then they'll consider talking to you. Who are exactly the customers that you would have to partner with to make this happening? On the clinical side, we partner with medical academic institutions that are used to running clinical trials and assessing new technologies. And we're partnering with them to write papers and, and generate evidence about the clinical and economic value of what we're building. So we actually published a paper earlier this week that showed that with our first product, pathologists were able to find many more cancers than of the very difficult ones to find than without our product. And so we continue to build a body of evidence for that and we partner with academic institutions to make sure that these trials are run the right way and that the evidence is solid. There's been a lot of money uh, pouring into the AI and healthcare world. This type of technology, and this type of cooperation alive it requires lots of fundings and so on. Do you think we see more consolidations that are going to merge between one another like it happens in other markets? Do you see there's going to be more acquisitions or do you see maybe there's going to be even more investments and people will try to take all these companies to IPO? What is your guess uh, that directionally this market is, is going towards? 
capital is essential here because it takes a long time to build something that's really good. And then we talked about regulatory and evidence. We didn't even touch on getting reimbursement for these technologies, which also takes some time. And so I think there's continue to be investments in, in startups that come up with really good ideas of how to apply AI to build advanced diagnostics technologies. And what we're seeing in radiology, which is a few years of he- ahead of pathology in this space, is that you do see some companies succeeding, and I think a couple of them are close to IPO. Some have been acquired and consolidated. I think some have um, failed to achieve product market fit or took traction in the market. So I think just like other spaces, you will see a mix of results here. And I think it really depends on whether you get first that product market fit, and then if you can address all the stakeholder needs um, in a way that become sustainable for your company. I I think we still, we have yet to see that. It's very early days, at least in pathology. We have yet to get to sustainability here, but I really do believe that if we build tools with with the value that we expect, uh, with breakthroughs in how patients are diagnosed and how treatment is selected, we will be able to capture that value and become sustainable. I think that's basically explaining us that this is a very uh, expensive area to get into in terms of entrepreneurship. So there is a capital investment, there is an R&D risk. Additionally, there is also a cash flow issue. So you have to keep all of this going before the business can really thrive uh, over time. So for, for whoever wants to be an entrepreneur in this area, um, just uh, be aware of all these uh, uh, complexities. 